came in to join me. Um, I don't like to do too much recording, especially if people are in here just due to their privacy. You know, people are in their bathing suits and I don't want to violate anyone's privacy. So I'll try to get these pool workouts best I can for you guys. Try to document them. If, you know, there's people in the pool, obviously I don't want to disturb anybody. But if I got the pool to myself, maybe it's free game. You know what I'm saying? Um, but let me get to finishing this workout, you guys. I'll see you when I get out of the pool. I be so sick, you niggas got contradicted. I be so bold with myself, can you come and fuck me? I be so ordinary, said when you won't crown me. Treat me like all the right, wear me out. Arguments, you air me out. Treat me about your whereabouts. I can't keep no conflict with you, boy, can we just rub it out? I don't want no sex with you, you know you're my thug, and I can't shake this habit, no. I'm in a baby, let me rub it this way. Let me on the fence. You know, as I'm moving through this upper body workout, because that's the only body part that I can work on right now at the moment, because I can't bear any weight down on my leg at this time. You know, I'm putting in probably like two upper body workouts a week, and it's a combination between, you know, these weights right here uh, and resistance bands. And I combined the two for a couple reasons. Weight is just to build strength and build symmetry throughout my body. And the resistance bands is to define, you know, for, for muscle definition. And I find a lot of times women are afraid to work their upper body because they might be considered like bulky or manly or it's just not being feminine enough or attractive. And, you know, that's just been a myth that's been going on for too long that I just want to address. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with being manly or non-attractive or, or not being feminine enough. And I can't stand the fact that women have, you know, become victim to that false narrative or criticism, you know? It, it's just, like I said, it couldn't be further than the truth. You know, um, your body needs symmetry. It needs balance and it needs to be symmetric. So if you're putting in two to three like booty days a week, sis, you got to offset that with some upper body. Otherwise, you're going to be walking around imbalanced. And when you have muscle imbalances, you're more prone to injury. You're more prone to, to pulling a muscle, breaking a bone, and you don't want to suffer from that because that's gonna set you back months when all you gotta do is put in one or two of these workouts a week. And the beauty of putting in these workouts or putting in any workout of that, of that matter is you wear your progress on you. You wear your progress you know, inside of you and you wear it like outside of you. So every time you're looking in the mirror at yourself, you can see the product of your work. So if you start to see yourself get a little bit too bulky or too manly, if it looks like that to you in the mirror, then you can scale back. Don't quit doing it all together, but just scale back on it a little bit. Maybe you need to reduce the weight. Maybe what you're what you're lifting currently is too heavy. Maybe you need to reduce the volume. You know, maybe you're doing way too many repetitions of a lower weight that is starting to make you a bit too defined, more defined to your liking, right? Um, again, how aesthetically pleasing 
you are to you matters the most, right? And But you have to be smart at the same time. You don't want to totally neglect this area up here and be flabby or non-defined up here, but then be super defined and bulky down there. Like, that's not even cute. You know, we, uh, especially the, the natural girlies, right? The, the girlies that didn't cheat the, the system and go get surgery. The natural girlies, you know, we do everything to not want to look like we got our bodies done. And if you're a natural girly and you're neglecting this up here and only focusing on your lower body down here, pretty soon you're going to start to look, you're not going to look natural. You're going to look like you got your body done. That's not the goal. You feel me? So, um, again, weights, resistance, you can follow along with my workouts. I'm going to link this one in the, in the description box. Um, you can follow along with my upper body workouts because that's all I'm going to be posting at this time until I'm clear to do some lower body. Um, but follow along with mine. Like, again, you wear your progress on your body. You decide how bulky or how defined you want your body to look. But I just encourage you to not ignore it. Don't ignore it. Let's get into the workout. I want to finish it. Now I'm at the silent tree. Let me know for mission. No fish, never getting born. Can you switch positions? I want to say your song. You'll never listen. No, no. I've been a baby. Every repetition. Do you wish it was easier than what it was? Oh, yeah. I've been a baby. No, I'm standing on your bus. No, I'm standing on your bus. Somebody tell me the answers. Me who isn't the answer. Me who isn't. Maybe I'm telling myself that there ain't nothing that'll change that. What good would it be if I knew how you felt about me? Yeah. It could have been right, but I was wrong. Only think about you. Man, I don't know what it is. I don't know what, like, I can't really put a finger on it, but I have just been so focused lately. Like, I've just been so focused, so productive. I haven't been this productive in a very long time. Like, even before the accident, like, before I got hurt, um, I wasn't this locked in and this focused. Like, me being this locked in and this focused, I can vividly remember the last time I was this locked in and this focused. It was right when I started my online fitness business back in 2020. I was so locked in, like it wasn't even funny. I was so intentional about every move I would make. I would sit there and write in my journal, I I am going to make $10,000 a month by June 30th, 2020. I am going to make $10,000 a month in my online fitness business by June 30th, 2020. I'm going to make $10,000 a month in my online fitness business by June 30th, 2020. I used to write that in my journal 10 times every single day. I used to jot it down 10 times, the same sentence. Ten I was super locked in. And guess what? I made my first 10K by May 20th, 2020. Like it was a month before June 20th, 2020. Um, I had a goal for, you know, three months and I hit it in two. And I just never been that locked in before y'all. Like it is, I, I sense it's going to be something good to come about this. 
Um, some, some good things are already coming about this. Um, I am like just in my creative bag. I've been getting a lot of compliments on my vlogs and on my content lately. And it's just, I don't know what it is. Maybe I was just sitting still for so long. Sitting still, just watching other people's content, you know, consuming other people's content. I literally consumed content for two months straight, like consumed. I did not create at all. Um, I consumed knowledge for two months straight, like new knowledge on a new topic instead of just overloading my brain on knowledge with the same topics. I think over time I just grew um, like overwhelmed and tired by it all. I got overwhelmed and I got really tired with the fitness business. So I quit prospecting. I quit taking clients like two months before I got hurt. I quit taking clients because I got so overwhelmed with it all. And, um, you know, I'm at a time now where I'm ready to just open it back up. I'm looking for 10 people looking to get ripped in the next 60 days. I'm that fired up. Like you will want to work with me at this time right now. I'm that fired up. Like it did. You damn near got to be like a person that just don't care about their life if you sign up on one of my fitness programs and don't succeed because I'm on your ass. You know what I'm saying? Because I demand a certain level of performance out of myself. So I'm going to demand a certain level of performance from you. Like it, it's, it'll be impossible to fail if you hop into my hop into one of my programs at this time, not saying that you had a higher probability of failing if you hopped into one of my fitness programs before, like, but I'm telling you, like, it is contagious. Like productive energy is contagious. It's super contagious. I swear, man, if you get around six productive people, you will be the seventh by default. If you get around six creative people, you will be the seventh by default. So if you're around a super productive and creative person at this point right now, when you're at your lowest, it's impossible to fail, baby. Man, as I'm talking, I can smell like these fragrances that I just lit. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I do not like the smell of food in my house for too long, like strong food smells. And I had just cooked fried at that, at that right? Fried. Uh, here I am talking about fitness and fried food in the same sentence. Let me explain. I shallow fried in cornstarch and not flour. I shallow fried um, some salmon. So, you know, it was a really uh, clean protein, high protein. Probably one of the better proteins you should eat in order to burn fat. But I shallow fried that um, in cornstarch. It was really good. But now my house smells like fried fish. And I cannot stand the smell of food in my house, let alone fried food. Oh, my goodness. Like, if I had it, if I had the, the, uh, if I had it up to me, baby, I would cook outside um, all the time. It's just today, it's just been so hot. Sacramento has been just insanely hot um, over this summer. Um, and I, I wasn't going to go outside to cook nothing right now. So, man, with that being said, I got a bunch of incense, a bunch of candles burning just to get rid of the smell because... I can't stand the smell of food just lingering in the house. Comment below if y'all feel the same way. <laughs> y'all like like food just lingering in your house. Ugh, gross. Um, and yeah, man, I'm talking to y'all in my bonnet. Um, this is slightly different because it's Sunday evening. It's about a quarter to seven in the evening. Um, no, I'm not going to bed early. Um, I washed my hair 
And so I got a bunch of like moisturizer and conditioner in it right now. Um, this bonnet is really good because it keeps the moisture in my hair, you know, versus me having like a regular cloth scarf or something like that um, to where it'll just eat up, you know, will extract the moisture. Like this actually keeps the moisture in my hair. And I noticed ever since I started wearing it, like my hair has been a lot more moisturized and a lot more, you know, um, well kept, if that makes sense. But anyways, back to my, <laughs> back to my, uh, my feelings lately, just on everything, man, I just been in my productive bag. I've been, you know, on my physical fitness, I've been eating clean, drinking a whole lot of watermelon juice. You see me drinking any red liquid, it's watermelon juice, seeded watermelon at that. Um, I really can't do the seedless. Ugh, I just can't. Um, for some reason, it just don't hit the same. It don't taste the same. And, um, you know, when you remove the seeds from something, you basically take the life away from it. You know, when something has a seed, that means it's living. And when you extract the seed from it, that means it's no longer living. It's late. It's dead. And, you know, a lot of my diet is dead things. I'm going to be real with you. But there are certain parts of my diet that I want to keep alive, right? <laughs> Watermelon is one of them. Fruits are one of them. Like, I really want my fruits to be living if I can help it, you know. So I eat a lot of berries. You know, those have, like, seeds in them. I eat a lot of berries. I eat a lot of mangoes. I have a lot of seeds in them. I eat apples, organic apples, they have seeds. You know, watermelon, of course, seeded. Um, cherries, oh, I love cherries, man, I love cherries. Uh, only thing I wish they, I could find seeded is grapes because I can eat so many grapes. I love grapes, but shoot, you can't find a seeded grape to, to save your life, man. They have removed the seeds from grapes since the beginning of time, man. And uh, slowly but surely, you're just starting to see a lot of seeded fruits, a lot of living fruits, a lot of living things just slowly, slowly disappear. Uh, but I want to try to keep them in my diet as, as much as possible. Man, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. Y'all know what happens when I get to rambling, when I get to yapping, but I think y'all, y'all like that. Um, but yeah, man, I just wanted to talk about my productivity. I got on a tangent a little bit with the fruits and with the fitness, but you know, being this productive, it feels great. It feels great. Love you like a brother, treat you like a friend, respect you like a lover. What's going on you guys? Currently the next day, bright and early. Uh, I couldn't sleep last night, so I got up around 4.30 a.m., put in a little workout, um, and now I'm just out here watching the sunrise and just soaking it all in. Yesterday, um, I didn't have time to really film uh, my day after my physical therapy appointment because things just got a little hectic. Um, it was just back to back to back 
errands, um, and then I had to teach and, and all that junk. But I wanted to hop on here just to tell you what happened in physical therapy yesterday. You know, I, my experience so far with physical therapy was kind of bittersweet because, you know, when I was searching for a physical therapist, it was a little difficult because a lot of people wouldn't take my insurance. But there was one physical therapist that called me, set up the appointment and took me in. But the very first day I went to the appointment, she seemed a bit rude, a bit short. And um, I was like, dang, why is this lady so rude? You know what I'm saying? Like she clowned my walk in front of everybody, literally. Like I was so embarrassed and just, I don't even, I didn't even know if I wanted to go back to her after that. Cause it was just, it just wasn't a good experience, but I stuck with it. And by the second visit, you know, she got a lot better. She saw that my walk improved and she was proud of me and, you know, she was talking to me about what the next steps were and she started assigning me these pool exercises, like things to do in the pool. And you know, me being the fitness guru, the exercise person, I was so excited that I was able to exercise that I just executed every um, thing that she gave me, every assignment. And uh, my walk started to drastically improve, like drastically improve. Uh, you know, the moment I started doing these pull exercises, God damn bugs. Sorry about that y'all. The moment I started doing these pull exercises, right? So, um, you know, by the second visit, she was going through my chart and she noticed that my hemoglobin was low. And mind you, I don't know what hemoglobin is. I know it's like, has to do with the blood. Um, and she said, all my blood platelets, blood, all of that is, is fine, it's normal, but the hemoglobin was something that was like unusually like concerning for her, right? And she started to concern me. I'm like, what do, what do I do to get my hemoglobin up? She said, you know, I don't really know, but I just know it's low. Let me, let me you know, look into it, you know, and, and just see what's going on, right? Mind you, she's a physical therapist. Like, she shouldn't be doing what doctors do. The doctors should have pointed that out to me, right? And so, by yesterday's visit, this is my third time seeing her, so by the third visit, I come into her office and she said, so I did extensive research on hemoglobin. And, you know, just based on everything that you told me so far about you, your brother, what you have is so unique. You know, it's, it's like one out of like a billion people who have this, right? I, I have such a rare and unique condition and it's a genetic condition because it runs on my dad's side of the family because my brother has it. And one of my cousins on my dad's side have it. They have it severely worse than I have it. But it just, it runs in my, on my father's side. It's a genetic disease. But long story short, this lady said there's a treatment for it. I'm tearing up when I say it because I've been struggling with this my whole life. My brother's been struggling with this his whole life. He lost his leg because of it. My cousin struggles with it. She's in her late 60s and she's in a wheelchair as well. I'm sorry, you guys. She's in a wheelchair as well. And I don't want to end up like that. And the fact that this physical therapist found a treatment for this disease that none of these doctors stepped up to find. Mind you, doctors practice medicine. That's their practice. 
that should have been pointed out to me years ago. Like when I was a child dealing with this, when my brother was a child dealing with this, that should have been pointed out. Mind you, with it being unique as it is, I get that they might not know about it, but the hemoglobin alone should have been pointed out to me, right? This shouldn't be my first time hearing about it at 43 years old. I should have heard about that years ago. You feel me? But anyways, that's besides the point. I'm so grateful for this physical therapist because she didn't have to go out of her way to do that. She did that out of the goodness of her heart. And people come into your life for a reason. A reason, a season, or a lifetime. And I don't know if me and her relationship will be for a lifetime, but I know for this season in my life, she came into my life for a reason. And I can't thank her enough. I'm so grateful. So, I'm going to continue to take this in. And, um, I'll keep you guys updated.